Since you ain't yeah. since you ain't send me none, you ain't send me none, idiot. You just say you just you just you just say stuff just to say it. I'm kind of glad we don't have yours because this one's probably better anyway. You you guys have the top barbecue. Yeah, barbecue. <laughs> you have the top barbecue restaurant and you're the only barbecue restaurant in Miami. How long do you work out for? Thirty minutes. Twenty. Twenty minutes. Yeah. Coaching girls flag football isn't working out. You can't keep up with me if we were working out together anyway. Ask me how many times we worked out. Are you coming up here? No. I got obligations. No, you don't. But I'm about to go because you're annoying me and boring me already, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that is just a small excerpt of the back and forth jovial nature that uh, exists. I mean, that's a snapshot of the receiver room, huh, Gabe? Uh, does some of that stuff go on all the time here at the facility, too? I would imagine it does because Isaiah never shuts up, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Welcome in, by the way. Yeah, we had Coach McDermott come into our meeting, and we had some good stories going on for the past <laughs> five minutes of our meeting. So yeah. Coach McDermott definitely knows how the receiver room that's is. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's this embed is about the off season that you guys spent. They spent some time with you, and I, you know, obviously Isaiah and, and, and other guys as well. What's different about your off seasons now than it, than it has been? What what are we going to see in this embedded? Um, you know, just see the way we live our lives um, as players. You know, everybody sees us on Sunday, and and you know what you see on the social media page yeah. when the season's going. But you know, we live normal lives and do normal things, and um, have similar hobbies to a lot of the people that watch us. And kind of just wanted to show them the other side of football yep. when we're not on the field. We saw you on your fishing boat. I wish I had more time to fish as much as maybe you get to in the off season. But large, you're going largemouth there, right? When yeah, we were, yeah, we were. We just went out real quick, see if we can try and kept, catch a couple largemouth over just for you know the the show and show people that you know my hobby and what I love what to do. You, what are you using? Brown worms or what do you? What are no, you, no, we were jigs? using all artificial. So we were yeah. going out there with you know speed worms and you know speed jerk baits and top water, whatever. We were trying to yeah, see what so they were going to bite on. You, so well, you had a bite on. What was was it a fish or was yeah, it? Yeah, no, no, it was a no, it was a fish. <laughs> but we think it was a, it was a big old mud fish. Oh, so, okay. We actually had a couple more bites. Um, my friend was um, successfully able to land like two of them, two or three. Right. Um, I was having a hard day, but. Have you been it able to is. have you been able to get out here at all and do some fishing in your time up here? Yes, I last last time around this time I was catching a couple smallmouth because yeah. they were spawning, so they were on the beds and stuff. And then um, in the wintertime, I was trying to catch some steelhead. Still haven't haven't landed a steelhead yeah. successfully. It's a little yet. bit different yeah. fishing. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm I'm throwing the fly too, so it's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. okay, it's a different yeah. type What's of fishing a, that I'm That takes some skill now. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it does, and so. I don't know if you've been up on Lake Ontario, but you can do some salmon fishing down there. I mean, it's yeah. Like they got king salmon up there. The lake's stocked with king salmon. That's yeah. that's so some we, work though. Yeah. So me and my me and Jake Kumro. Okay. We were fishing probably around I think November December. Oh, okay, that's um, late. Um, over down in the Lower Niagara, and he caught this. I mean, I don't. I'm not really familiar when it comes to the you know salmon weight and everything. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, he caught a pretty big king salmon, and we yeah. probably chased that thing a hundred yards. Down, down the water, just trying to land this fish. Yeah, yeah they're no it. joke. They're hard oh, to yeah. land. You get the yeah. big ones. Oh yeah. You know, you go. They got charter guys up there that help you out too. If you need, uh -huh. a, if you need a guy, I got a guy for you. But they drop those lines out 450 yards out the back. Yeah. And Lake Ontario is like 1600 feet uh -huh. deep. One of those lines hits on the deep lines. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be a big one. Yeah. I mean, like you're 25, 35 pound yeah. fish. So. Yeah, we probably caught close to that yeah. i mean we were just we were just throwing them out there just fishing along the lower niagara and, and hooked in the water you had a high you, test line then that's pretty yeah yeah no it was, it was a lot of fun and i caught like two walleye and i think one of my other buddies caught a walleye i think as well but look at you how long, you, how, long have you, how long have you been back in town now since since whenever the ota day was so monday what? or tuesday this last that week. was the 19th last was week. the first the 19th yeah, oh, yeah. so that was the um that came in. so what do you know what is what about this uh this off-season program how mm -hmm. it's going i know it's a lot of team building a lot of yeah. running around in shorts and t-shirts but yeah no it's always fun to get around the guys you haven't seen them in a while you know um it's good to get a break after a long season but then you go probably a month and you're like all right you know yeah. time to it's ready to go back and compete right. again is there any right. story behind the flex photo with josh from the other day or is that just there's the camera let's just yeah. 
Let's just rip it. I mean, I wasn't even flexing. Josh was doing all the flexing. I was trying to. <laughs> I, if I'd have known it was gonna go over all the social media, I would have made myself look a little bigger. Yeah. You know, Josh kind of towering over me a little bit. Yeah. That's a tough but, guy uh, to be standing next to. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> no, but it, it's awesome. I'm glad that I see people took it and ran with. It. I've seen some funny posts about it. Yeah, so it was good. Really it good. was all in good fun. Though. How's oh, yeah. it gonna be the uh, this transition between Brian Dayball to mm-hmm. Ken Dorsey? Knows you. How's that going? Um, it's going good. I mean, um, I feel like we're gonna have a great offense. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You know, Ken Dorsey. He has a great past of, of when he played, and right. he was a quarterback, so you know you know what guys like to do like that, and we're ready to go out there and sling a little bit and have some fun. Awesome. I, I, I can't imagine what kind of runs through your head because, you know, the game you had in Kansas City was like a coming out party for you individually. I know you would have taken a win over anything like that anyway, but then it's but then you're done, and it's like, man, I was just dominating, and now i got to wait nine months before I get yeah. to get on. A f- how how do you compartmentalize all of that? Because you fi- your game finally hits critical mass for everyone to see, yep. and now you've got to sit and wait nine months before you can get on the field and show people again. How do you, how do you navigate that? Well, you know, um, you know, a lot of people take that game and they bring it up still now to this day. Right. And I'm a guy who tries to you know, leave that alone. The past is the past. No one cares about that anymore. Right. It's what you're going to do you know, now, and I try to focus on that. Um, would have been good to be able to keep performing that same year, of course, because uh, you know getting on a streak like that as well. But you know, it's, it's, it was able. I had the opportunity to show what I can do, and now I'm just ready when it starts game one to be able to show that you know it can be on a consistent basis. Yeah. I don't know about four yeah. touchdowns a game now. Well, no, I know, I know, we know. <laughs> you know I don't want to get no, I know. Let's of course, of let's course, not discount the possibility, but yeah, the probability may be a little bit different. Of course. <laughs> so tell us a little, a little bit about you know what do you got now that you've been your a wily, salty old vet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> how has old. how has draft day changed? What are you going to be doing? Um, you guys going to get together now that tomorrow night? You guys, I, I mean, some of you guys got to get together and yeah, hang we'll out, probably, right? We'll probably do something, hang out. I mean, especially it'll be the last day of our practice week, you know, too yeah. as well. So definitely get a, uh, the guys who stay in town. We try to hang out and do things. We go out golfing and do stuff like that. Maybe we'll head to somebody's house and, you know, turn a draft on, just hang out and play cards or something. But yeah. definitely something I'll bring up to the guys. The big part sure. of your draft story was after you got drafted, you went out and started running around, <laughs> sort of running yeah. routes wherever you were in your backyard or something. You're out in the yeah, yard. Yeah, so we were running routes. Yeah, my, I had my guys there, <laughs> my quarterback, uh, Mackenzie Millen and Traquan Smith and a couple of the other guys were there. And I know that KZ talked about earlier how he wanted to throw. Yeah. So we were just waiting to see when I got drafted. And then after that, we were going to throw. It wasn't a show for anybody okay. to be able to come out there and see. It was planned before. It, it was, was already planned. planned. Okay. It was already planned. So whether I, I got drafted that day or not, yeah. I was going to be throwing that day. I got yeah. you. Um, and a lot of people think that that stuff's kind of fake. Um, but we do. I do put a lot of work in. I do put yeah. a lot of time in the craft. And that was nothing... You know, I try to stay as humble and and, and have humility in no, this game because it'll be taken we, from you whenever. Yeah, we know. I mean, yeah. you're Gabe the Grinder, man. That's like yeah. that's that should be your nickname. Or something. We came. You probably come up yeah. with something better. So than we that. brought you in. We brought you in because you're one of the centerpieces of this. The first uh, episode of this embedded for this season, and one of the things I saw in the embedded was you have a dog. It's mm. a French bulldog. He's I have a French, a French bulldog. I got a French bulldog, and I got a uh, a bully XL pit named Jade as well. Oh okay. yeah, I got a pit. Yes. What's your what's your Frenchie's name? Ghost. Oh, all right, cool. I love it. No, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah he's the best. They're, he was wandering ho- across the street there. They're yeah, hilarious. Let's go out to traffic. They're the, the absolute quiet street. They're the absolute funniest dog of all they time. Are. I mean, yeah, they are. The personalities uh, yeah. are nuts. They're they're great. So yeah, I was I was kind of interested to hear that, hear that. And your your other one's a pit. A yeah, it's a bully XL pit. Bully XL pit. Yeah, it's from what actually is, Taiwan Jones. So he breeds. Oh, uh, okay. all right, these, okay. These, these different kind of pit bulls and are I, they I larger than regular pits? Yeah, they're pits? larger. Yeah. So what do they go? I think it's an American bulldog and a pit bull terrier. Then they're mixed. Okay. Oh, okay. So how how big is he? She. Like Taiwan 60, Taiwan, Taiwan has one that is 150. Whoa. 150 pounds. 150 pounds. That's like bull mastiff territory. Pit bull, yeah. So I had a, yeah I had an old only 50 I had a, pounds. Yeah, I had, that we've always been until we had Vern this or Frenchie. We were always big dog people. I had an old mm-hmm. English Mastiff that was at his point. It was like 226 at his highest. Yeah, that's And cool. it's, a, it, it's a job. It is. But, it's one, a job. but then you get a French and you're like, oh, man, yeah. this is nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like a treat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> right. I would be remiss, Gabe, if I did not mention this. You are my wife's favorite player. She used to be a huge uh, Fred Jackson guy. Oh, okay. So you've taken over that mantle. Yeah, awesome. So, I yeah, I just, I, she'd kill me if I go home and I didn't mention <laughs> that to you. So yeah, you are her favorite yeah. player. She. She loves number thirteen, uh, yeah. and she's at all the home games. So yeah, it's something when you when I 
You're never. I was never even my kid's favorite player. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Good for you. You got one, right? Yeah, so got one. And then <laughs> I saw you're training with a bunch of guys mm-hmm. um, in the league down there. Like, yep. you know, who do you usually cross paths with before you get back up here when you're down in Central Florida? I'm down there, so it's usually like the the UCF guys. I've okay. been training with uh, Latavius Murray, Traquan Smith, Mackenzie Milton. Yep. Um, and then I got my homeboy uh, Trey Nixon, who's over in New England. Um, you know, cross paths with a couple other guys too as well, but usually. And then also, I got a big one, Kenny Gainwell. Oh is yeah, is a big, big friend of mine and uh, a grinder. So he lives down there. Yeah. Um, yeah, he'll move down there and train me in the off season. The one, uh, the running back t- at Philadelphia. Okay. And he's a worker, and he's gonna be great. Yeah. What um, what do you think the odds are that you at any point in any off season can actually get Isaiah up to Sanford? From Miami, what would you lay the odds at? Because <laughs> you were I, trying. I was trying, man. I try to get these guys to come out and train. I, I you know, I'm confident in the work that we do, and I, and I trust in what I, uh, the process, and I know my process is good, and I want to be able to bring as much guys as I can around because it's always, it always makes it better, yeah. Um, yeah. to have guys to compete with, and also to have guys, you know, just to get better with and and, and bond with. Last one for me before, before I let you go. I, um, You've been through these off season, these OTAs and mini camps before. What has McDermott's? How has Sean McDermott's message this year, at, at the earliest stage of this year, coming in with the expectations of the club yeah. so high? Mm-hmm. What's his message been, and how is it different? Um, you know, we just have to focus on what we can control, and the biggest thing for us is we know we're just that one step away from going where we want to go, and we just have to take that in our own hands and be able to, you know. Do what we do what we need to do in order to to get what we want to get. Um, I know the biggest thing in OTAs was this is bonding with the guys. I mean, I feel like the closer you are, the 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 more you want to fight on that field and win for your win for your brothers, and that's what we need to do. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Good Gabe, stuff. look, it's Gabe, great thanks, to have man. you in studio. Yeah. Uh, it's great to see faces up close and personal again. So good exactly. to have you in. Thanks for it's stopping by. We'll be sure to make sure everybody's watching that embedded series because you and Isaiah on the phone. That's. That's entertainment, man. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, he's, so he's thanks there. very much for the time. We appreciate it. Thanks. And good luck through the rest of the yes. OTAs and minicamp. We'll see you at training camp.